Hello YouTube, Blue Matona here, and we are going to be doing a Rome Total War playthrough. And I'm thinking we're going to use the Broody Eye. I kind of like them out of the Roman options, really, and I don't really want to play as another nation. They're kind of fun because they get, they get to go up against the Greeks over here, and they have some good enemies. They can really expand over this entire half of the world, whereas the other nations are kind of more, like, you know, the Julii here are going north, and the, the Scipii, I mean, Africa is not that great a place, and they have to go through all this wasteland before they even get to Egypt, which kind of will control this area. So, let's go no advice on it. Throw everything up to hard difficulty, see how we do. Manage all settlements. Yeah, I think I'm liking these settings, so, um, alright, let's get right into it, see how it goes. All right, that was a pretty intense starting video there. Pretty really set the tone for the game. So once this loads up, let's see what our starting position is. Okay, immediately we have a mission: take Apollonia. All right, so we got to take this town right here to start the game. Looks like there aren't walls or anything. Pretty undefended rebel town, so that shouldn't be too bad. So if I'm not mistaken, this whole area over here is going to end up being Greece, and then you know. I don't know, my, my, my strategy I'm thinking is going to be to move south down into Greece, take over that economic hub, and then move north into more Central Europe and Eastern Europe, see, see how we do there. Um, might leave the Egyptians down south alone, just because they can be a little tough, their chariots are pretty powerful. So, alright, let's see the setup that we got here. So we have two towns to start. Tarentum is our capital. Okay, so I have a pretty good leader here. He's doing really good management. Town is really high public order. Now, I want to get population growth going pretty much as much as I can here in the early game. So I would usually, if I have public order this high, to the point where they can, st it still stays over about 100%, I would up the tax rate. But I don't really want to hurt population growth in the early game. I want these towns to be growing. I want to make them really, you know, centers of commerce for me here in Italy. Because they won't really have to worry about like war too much unless unless honestly I get invaded but I doubt that or you know until the late game when you have to fight the other Roman factions so for a while that's um that should be pretty set okay so I think first I'm going to build let's see what the shrines do okay I think I'm going to do this one with the increased tradable goods that doesn't especially for these towns that I want to be economic hubs, I mean, that, that definitely helps, it'll just get an extra extra little bit of money flowing in, we can, you know, start to get a little bit more of a pretty good money source, just to be able to sustain our large armies and everything, so, okay, let's get a couple units going over to Apollonia, but also, this is a strategy I've kind of implemented when I used to play this game, it might be beneficial to go and race down and try to take Syracuse before the Scipii can. If I can successfully go take Syracuse, then it really should stop the Scipii from being able to expand into the Carthage area over here, at least, you know, a lot in the early game. Plus, the Greeks are going to be my enemies anyway, so I don't really need to worry about 
you know, the negative effects of declaring war on them. Okay, let's take an early mercenary unit, bolster my army a little bit. What we have here, it's a pretty small army. Not much going for it. So let's load the spy up on the ship. Oh yeah, I gotta hit space bar, get everything, you know, speed up. Let's get my, um, my diplomat. Do I have trade relations early on? So let's see what's going on. Financial. I am making 361 with trade. Huh. Do I have a trade overview here? No, how do I... Maybe within each city? Maybe settlement details? Income and trade is 270. Okay, I mean, got some trade going, so that should be fine. Let's, let's go make sure I have trade deals with the other Roman factions. I'm not sure if I start off with that. Uh, it seems like I do, since I don't have any options for diplomatic action there. So I'm probably good with that front. I, I, I assumed it would start like that. I, I just kind of wanted to make sure. So let's load up these guys. Not those guys, this big army. And let's try this out. Let's um, let's send them down towards Syracuse right away and see if I can kind of snatch that from under Skippy Eye's tongue over, over here. Let's get a unit of cavalry. Actually, get one ship going. That way I can transport these guys over next turn. I don't have to wait for these ships to return. And... Okay, let's get one more diplomat going. We just want to start sending them out, and they can kind of use them as exploration tactics. So I think that's all for this first turn. Let's see what happens. Okay, end of turn report. So I lost some money. I kind of knew that was going to happen in the early game. I mean, you know, not really with upkeep and everything. I mean, that's that's kind of fine. It's more the buying troops and stuff. Um, my upkeep is definitely more than my income right now. I probably should raise my taxes, especially since these towns are, are making negative tax rates. Yeah, probably happy enough. I mean, population can grow. I can lower it later. I kind of need to make some money right now, though. So let's definitely raise that up. So let's get this little tiny army. Let's, let's throw in... Um, let's throw in this guy with them. Let's get this guy going across. That way they can start the attack on Apollonia. So I will do that in a second. Let's see what mercenaries we have. Now, hoplites are really useful when you're defending cities. Because you can really clog up gates and everything with them. But I'm not going to get them yet. Because I don't really have any cities I need to defend right now. So let's keep this army going south. Doesn't look like Skippy Eyes really attacked Syracuse yet, so that is definitely a plus. Plus, the city has almost no troops in it. Okay, so to immediately siege the city, we will declare war on them. And our army has 90 build points. So let's get. I don't really think a battering ram is too necessary. Because once you capture the walls, the gate will open up for you. So let's get one siege tower. Actually, they don't really have any men. Let's get a couple ladders so we can quickly run up the walls. We'll maintain that siege for one turn. War, yep, I know. Recruitment report. Cool. Construction, right. Okay, so I think one of the keys of this game is to always keep, basically just keep your cities like producing. I mean, they, they need to be building buildings as long as you have the money. They need to be able to produce troops, produce trade. So let's get some traders going. We'll just really start increasing, I think, yeah. So it increases tradable goods, and it helps with the population growth that we lost by raising the tax rate. So let's let's definitely get that going. And, um, huh, okay, let's move this guy down to Croton. We will get my agent onto that ship. We can send him across the sea. And let's have this agent walk up north, and he'll go around this way and see what he can find up there. Okay, so I guess time for the first battle. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so even though the number of men are pretty similar, I'm heavily favored to win because I'm pretty sure these rebel forces have pretty poor troops. So let's see how this goes. I'm not too worried. 
no walls or anything to really hamper me in this town. So just should be kind of a straightforward, yeah, walk oh, down these streets the battle. Slave. It really shouldn't be too hard. Okay, let's get a two study. I'm going to want them going up the central street. And now I can, I do have room here on the wings. So let's put my general, and I don't really like putting my generals out to dry in, you know, if the battles were close, but in, in a battle that I'm pretty much going to win it, I'll use them as like a flanking technique, just basically to try to flank around the enemy and come down the side once the main fight starts. So, yeah, they're all camped out in the middle of the city, so let's move those guys up there. We can move these, these guys behind them. I don't want to make them run right now, just because I, I, I really don't want to tire them out, even though it looks like they just kind of have peasants. Pretty weak infantry, yeah, they have, alright, so they have some spearmen, guys throwing spears and stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do is engage them right in here, and then have my cavalry run in from the side and kind of crush them from behind. So that's that's the goal right now, we'll, we'll see how it, how it is execution-wise. Let's speed up until my troops get to the positions I want, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I did not realize that they had a militia hoplites as well. I don't know how I missed that. It's a good thing I didn't. Wow, it's a good thing I didn't. Uh, you know, tell my guys to rush up, and I don't want them to get killed without me realizing. So, okay. They see that's why hoplites are so effective for defending cities because you can put them in a road and have them make their, uh, you know, shield of like their wall of spears that they can do so effectively, and then it's really, really pretty difficult after that to kind of advance, I mean, down the road. You have to run right into the wall. So let's get these guys um, running up. That way they, uh, they are in position because the enemy is advancing on me. And let's move my cavalry to here. Let's get them just moving in. If I can loop them behind the hoplite, that would be amazing. See, look, there's the wall of spears they're making, the hoplite, and it's going to start marching up towards my troops. These guys should start throwing. There they go. Get my general running in. Get him where I want him. Okay, good. So their hoplite's getting pelted by these guys. Let's get my general going against their spearmen rebels there. And then. Let's get my Hastati to start attacking this hoplite. Hopefully they can power through the spears. Cavalry. Alright, let's see if my cavalry can rush through and hit this from behind. I don't like running my Hastati straight into spears like this. Oh, they lifted their spears. That is great. That just clears the road. Okay, so yeah, they should be pretty done now. Actually, I don't want these guys fighting. I'll hold them for a later battle. Mm, that should be that. That was pretty easy. I mean, it's just a simple flanking technique to, to, fight, to fight this battle, really. I mean, it wasn't difficult at all. I just ran my horses around the side, and I mean, it helps that, you know, their troops are so rough and so weak. It's definitely, <laughs> definitely giving me a pretty big advantage. But um, definitely with... Hoplites, those spearmen, never run your cavalry straight into spears. It will decimate your cavalry. Oh, that's good. My general gained some experience. That is always nice. But, um, yeah, you definitely don't want to run straight into the cavalry. Good. Enemy general slain. That's exactly what I want. So let's finish off the rest of them, and then we should be good. A couple peltists left. Cavalry should take them out pretty quick. Yeah, always good to run your cavalry in from behind if you can manage to loop around those um those hot lights. They're, they're pretty rough if you run straight into them, especially with cavalry. Infantry, it's not horrible. Sometimes you can fight through, but yeah, you definitely don't want to run cavalry into them. Okay, right, so that's pretty easy. Good way to appease the Senate really early in the game. Just kind of get get some you know favor going with them before I, I move too far along, try to get ahead of the other factions. So let's occupy that. We will make this one of our cities and immediately... Okay, see, so notice that this is an interesting dynamic in this game. So immediately that alleviates the financial burden 
on Tarentum and Croton. As you can see, Croton, which was negative, and Tarentum, which was barely, barely positive, are now making a pretty substantial amount of money. And that is because the income that a uh, town produces is split up. Uh, okay, so it's, it's dependent, you know, clearly on money that you make and money that you have to spend. Now, this money, the size of your armed forces and the salaries for your generals, is split up between your towns. So essentially each town now, since I gained Apollonia, it's split up between them based on their population, and I, so I'm making more money in each one. So let's see, this might be a war hub right away, so as much as I usually make shrines right away, because they're just, they're always pretty good. What is this? Let's make town watch. See, this this town can't really do anything, so let's, let's get the Shrine the Mercury going, and, and we'll keep my army kind of put like in in position for a little while I don't I don't think it's too necessary to train up anything huh okay so let's get a unit of cavalry going is that that a blanky um, move I did there was pretty effective so let's try to keep that and okay let's see what happens next turn so yeah these turns are gonna go by pretty quick at the beginning looks like the Greeks went in uh okay so they're attacking my forces that were sieging Syracuse. So all units will be destroyed if I can win this battle. Now I am not numbered by about a hundred men, but army strength ratio is one to one. Definitely my general is pretty good compared to theirs. So let's see what happens here. I'm thinking since they're attacking me, I don't need the siege of the city. They're probably going to come out and I can be on the defensive. So I could probably just sit back in a defensive line and let them come to me, and hopefully that will let me make up the fact that I am down a significant number of men. Okay, so let's move these guys up here, get the high ground, if I'm going to be defending, up in the corner map. I think they should have their reinforcements coming in from this side of the city. That seemed to be the way they came in on the campaign map. So let's make a front line here with my three main infantry units, and let's put those guys on fire at will. I believe these are just spearmen. Yeah, so those guys can't, they're not gonna be throwing. Let's put my two units of cavalry on this side in case the uh, city troops start coming out, and then we will keep my Peltis in a long line. Let's take off skirmish mode and spread them out behind my men. So now they can, they can cover a pretty good distance. Okay, so immediately, I they're down there, so I need to turn to face them. So if you hit group select units, and you select them as a group, now when you turn your formation, or you reposition them, it will hold the formation you have. Which is a pretty useful trick, that way you don't have to set up your entire army again. Just because, you know, I have to, oh, I have to turn, you know, a quarter of the way to the left or something to be able to face the enemy. So I always think that's pretty... It's a pretty good little trick to have. So once again with the Hoplites, they're they're probably going to walk right into me. The good thing is they're slow with their spears. Oh, and they have archers. Okay, that's, that's a little bit of a pain about these guys. Peltis. See, they're going to be able to pick me off from long range, these archers, and I don't want to rush my cavalry up to take them out until these Hoplites are past them. Because if I, if I rush my cavalry up right now, the Hoplites are going to crush me. So let's... Okay, they're shifting. Let's remake my front line to look like that. And let's keep these peltis actually a bit closer together. And let's put them there. So it looks like... Let's get the archers out of the way. And let's move my general to the right flank. I don't I don't like him being exposed, especially to hoplites. They're, they're cavalry killers. So they left their archers undefended. So let's rush my cavalry right in and try to take them out. Is that, that they can just chip away at my troops if the hoplites are around them and they're defended and there wouldn't be much I can do about that. So, I'm liking this new setup. Okay, so I took out their archers. That's that's pretty good. Pretty good early, early battle move there. I'm very happy with that. Let's move these cavalry. Let's keep them out here, actually. Out on the flank. Okay, so these guys are starting to throw their spears. The Peltists are throwing their spears, and this this hoplite's getting demolished. Okay, see so that's look at all the bodies. I mean, this is pretty effective. Okay, I gotta watch out for these guys going after my cavalry. 
fast. Let's move this unit, actually. Let's run them up. Let's try to get those guys from behind. I want my those hoplites being taken out. And let's, let's get some melee combat going now. Okay. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty confident that this hoplite can be taken care of. Now, the cavalry are about to be hit. Hopefully they'll turn around when I attack them. They are turning toward my troops. Now let's rush my cavalry in from behind and take them out. Okay. Let's get my general in the fray. Get those guys being attacked. Let's try to take those out. Okay, now I need to do need to watch out for these guys coming up. So let's reform here with those. Let's take out this hoplite. See what I mean though? I attack the hoplite straight on, and yes, my units are flanking it a little bit. But the units in front really weren't able to break the hoplite's formation. But the moment my horses come in from behind, the moment my cavalry hits, the hoplite gets totally wiped out. So let's get these cavalry units back. Let's get my infantry to form the line again. And these guys are out of ammo, so let's just get them out of the battle. They don't, they don't really do much. I'd rather save the men than throw them into melee combat that they're just going to lose. So now I normally would try to chase down troops with my cavalry in these situations so that their armies can't replenish because it's it's better to just demolish their troops than let them rebuild um than retrain them it, it just costs more money to totally train a new unit instead of repairing the damaged one and also a new unit won't have experience whereas if you repair a damaged unit it will keep its little experience things but because this battle is a city battle and it's said before that all of their troops will be destroyed if i win there's no point in risking my cavalry by sending them out to take out those extra men. So now I don't have any spears left to throw, so unfortunately this hoplite is going to be have to take it on hand to hand mainly. It's really nice when you can kind of pick off a hoplite as it walks up to you with spears, because when they put the spears down they walk at like an extremely, extremely extra slow pace. So it makes it really easy to kind of pelt them with spears before they can even come close to attacking you. So what I'm going to try to do to counter that is use this, this long line that I have set up compared to their army. And that's because I want these cent the center unit of Hastati infantry to go head on into the spears and hopefully have the other two flank around the side. That is my goal, at least. Now I'm a little unsure why that cavalry... There they go. Okay, I was about to say they should have seen my guys. So let's get into a cavalry fight there. I should win this. It's just one general's bodyguard against two units of mine, so I'm pretty confident in that. Now let's get the Stadi, and let's get the other two to flank around. We'll see how this works out. So the Stadi are going to immediately rush, and the Spears, of course, as I expected, are pushing them back. Now let's get this unit in. Let's get these guys a little further behind. And let's move this Hastati unit in, and let's let's try to totally surround this hoplite. Oh, now I would love, the only guys I'm going to chase are the generals. I would love to take out their general. That would be amazing. But this, has, so this hoplite's totally surrounded. So it's it should slowly kind of get demolished. I, I don't think it should put up much of a fight. It's picking off a couple of my guys that are still in front of its spears. So you can see there are a couple bodies on the ground, but... It's incredibly shrinking in size. See, I'm breaking up the formation as my men push through from the back. Oh, oh get the general. Come on. Take out the Greek general. There we go. Okay, so that always helps. Get rid of their generals. And then, yeah, you can see this unit's routing now. They don't stand any chance. They're totally surrounded. So now we just need to finish taking them out, basically. And that is the battle. So... Definitely having the defensive advantage there served me well. Because I don't know if I had to siege a city with this amount of troops in it, with this army. I don't really know if I would have, if I would have had much of a chance of winning that battle. But having them attack me, I was able to sit back, pick them off with my spears, and really, you know, take the high ground. That always helps 
with these fights. As you can see, I mean, I demolished their army. Did any of my guys get experience? No. None of them did, but my, yeah, my horsemen, my equites did amazing. So that is what I like to see when I'm fighting a defensive fight. Just really take advantage of the terrain. Take advantage of the fact that my common infantry have spears. And now I have Syracuse. So that was an incredibly successful fight. Now I can slowly, maybe if I make a quick run for Libyum, which actually was just one of my Senate missions, which, so I will do that, I can really kind of keep the Scipii at bay, at least for a little bit, keep them from expanding too much. So just kind of looking, you know, really forward in the game here, making sure that when I do face the other Roman factions, they're about as weak as I can leave them. That's, that's pretty much my goal. Okay, so I think I'm going to end my first episode of this Let's Play Rome Total War there, and yeah, so pretty successful. Got two towns, a couple good battles, and my economy seems to be coming back on track. I need to work on the happiness in Syracuse a little bit. Let's lower the, the tax rate and everything, but that's expected, taking over a Greek city, so I'm sure that will be able to uh, kind of be risen in the future. So, all right, well, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in part two.